All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to 138 MMA. We are going to be doing a nice little live stream here for you. I've got Effie from Any Action Sportscast helping me break down this PFL2 regular season 2024 card. For all of you in the chat, Classical Andrew, the first one there. It's been a while since he's caught one of our live streams. And you know what, Classical Andrew, I'm so happy that you're here. I appreciate you. Every time you come out, you're, you're, you're fun in the chat putting out good positive stuff. I like that. I like the people that are negative too, but I like the positive just a little bit better. Uh, Effie, how you feeling about this card, man? Good, man. I actually have a chance to go to it live. It's actually happening you know, on the strip here in Vegas. And I'm thinking oh, about going to it. I'm deciding should I go to the face-offs uh, for the UFC 300 uh, for free or play a little bit you know, and, and see some PFL fights. So I feel like when MMA like this is in your town, you should take advantage of it and try to go see it. So I might, I might end up actually at these fights. That'd be dope, dude. I've never been to a PFL show. I've been to Bellator a couple of times, uh, like when I've had friends fighting and stuff, but I've never been to like PFL. So I wonder how they run it, if it's different. Nope. I've been to UFC even, but like nothing, like way back in the day, like back when UFC tickets were like, you know, cheap. (laughs) Like when you go for like 40 bucks. Yeah, dude, now it's pretty crazy, man. It sucks that they don't go out of town out of the Apex as much, but when they do, man, uh, you know, you definitely got to try to take advantage. I went to Salt Lake the last two times. Even though I'm in Vegas, I like to go out of town too. But I've been the last two Salt Lake cards, and they both ended with crazy head kicks in the main event. So I got pretty lucky there. That's true. <laughs> they did. Are, aren't those tickets like ridiculous though? Yeah. Well, the Usman one wasn't as bad. The Gaethje's one was it was pretty crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because they just keep getting worse. Yeah, it's only going up. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, like seriously, back when I like the last time I went to a show. It was okay. It was the card. Um, we'll, guys in the chat, we'll, we'll be we'll be breaking down the PFL card in a moment. We got we got to go a little story time. It was um, it was the card. I became a big fan of Eric Anders, so I went there originally to see Drew Dober fight because he's my boy, right? Drew's Drew's awesome, um, and he was fighting that night. But it was the night that Eric Anders like punted Tim Williams' head into the stands. And it was the sickest thing I've ever seen. Like it was fantastic. <laughs> like that's that's when Anders like made his way into my top five favorites. Like that guy's like that right there. That moment. Like that was it. Like if you haven't seen it, it was in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is like a city near where I live. Mm-hmm. And um, it was it was wild because Tim Williams is actually from uh, Iowa, which is pretty close to Nebraska if you know your geography, right? And so Tim, he you know he was kind of the local guy. The, he had some family in the crowd. In fact, his mom was like a row or maybe two rows in front of me. She was like right there in front of me. Mm. And so we're watching me and my buddy, my buddy, Mike, we're watching the fight. And uh, like Anders kicks this dude's head off. Like, I think he died. <laughs> like, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's dead, but I'm going nuts. I'm like, that's the sickest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and then like my buddy, Mike, like test, he's like, yo, yo, dude, dude, I'm pretty sure that's Tim's mom. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but it was the sickest like, knockout yeah. i've ever seen yeah. dude didn't move for like ever like he was yeah. done like i I thought he might have died thankfully he didn't that's um, hilarious dude that's dude. Hey, it's not your fault <laughs> yeah one my but like i did kind of feel bad because his mom's like right there like crying because like so dude almost funny. died but yeah, at anyway that time, you don't know yeah <laughs> what a blast i got to tell eric that story when i interviewed him on the channel and like <laughs> it was one of my favorite things i've ever done so that was that was so much fun uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and break down this card. Um, we'll start off with – with okay, first things first, cra- uh, chat. There's been a, a few changes to the card, if you're not familiar. Refresh your topology pages. There are some changes. The first fight of the night is a change. We now have Marcelo Nunez. He's now taking on Jordan Heiderman. Um, originally, that was not the case. Nunez was supposed to originally take on uh, Lemos, and Heiderman was supposed to fight last week against – I forget who, right? Um so last week, Heiderman was set up to be squashed by whoever he was supposed to fight. But because that fell out, Heiderman's now stepping in against Nunes, who is actually a better matchup for him. Um, but we can break this down a little bit. Effie, what do you think on this one? Do you have a lean on either side? What do you like? What do you dislike? What do you know? So I'm going with Nunes in this fight, but I really actually don't like how old he is compared to you know Jordan. This is a, um, a situation where you're getting a late you know minute switch up here. Um, this was uh, like the last fight I researched. I actually didn't know about this fight until a few hours before the show. So I'm going with Nunez, man. Jordan just seems a little bit slow and stiff. You know, he's plotting forward and his 
his most recent win was super funny with the dude's knee got hurt and then he's like yelling like no moss like don't hurt me but like stop that was actually pretty funny but i mean i don't know i'm, I'm not really rushing to pay juice i'm what are the odds you know i'm assuming nunez is the favorite yeah yeah uh last i saw Hyderman was like plus 240 as the oh dog. wow that's dang i thought he'd be a slight favorite nunez that is yeah. but he probably does you know try to take this fight down and then submit the guy from there but i don't know it's gonna be close man uh to open up the fight i don't see myself betting this fight at all but I heard you before the show talk. Um, you were talking about how you think Jordan's a, a pretty live underdog, huh? He is, and let me tell you why. So, well, for, so I'm probably a little biased because Heiderman is from here, where I'm from. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen him fight locally at um, a little promotion called Dynasty Combat Sports. It's one of the. It's like a local promotion here in Omaha. I've seen him fight there before. Clear back, I think when he was like an amateur, still maybe, um, but forever ago. But anyway. What I know about Heiderman, also, we, you're probably familiar with him if you watched uh, that season of The Ultimate Fighter that he was on. Um, didn't do great on that season, but that's, I mean, that's, it's, it's kind of a different thing. But Heiderman's a pretty decent wrestler. And if you, um, this morning, after this was all switched up, um, I refreshed my, my memory on uh, my Nunez because I had notes for his fight against uh, What's-His-Face. But, but then I hadn't, like, okay, how is he going to handle this? Because Heiderman's going to want to be a wrestling-heavy game plan most likely or just throw a power shots but mostly wrestling and the game plan and if you look at the bavon lewis fight for nunez if you just look at the record yeah nunez won the fight but he's getting dominated on the mat controlled and uh lewis is just laying there just landing ground and pound beating him up pretty bad and then nunez pulls off a submission in fact most of nunez's wins are by submission here's what i'm kind of thinking at plus 240 i'm gonna throw a small bet on Heiderman. In fact, I actually already did. Um, I threw a tiny bet on Heiderman, not a big one, very, very small, because I do think Heiderman can stay safe on top if he gets this fight to the mat. And Nunez wants this fight on the mat as well. So I think he's going to be willing to be taken down. So it's small risk for, you know, I mean, sure, it's short notice for Heiderman, but he was going to fight last week. It's also short notice for Nunez because it's a different stylistic matchup for him. I don't think it's going to go. I think, I don't think it's going to be as easy of a matchup just for the style. So at plus 240, give me a little bit of the dog action here, but I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend going heavy. But that's what I'm thinking based on that <laughs> Lewis fight mostly. So, yeah, um, I don't yeah, know. Man, I mean, at all? I'm kind of surprised at the line, to be honest. I thought it'd be closer. I thought it'd be, I thought Nunez would be a favorite, but not by that much. Yeah, because I mean, he's not like a spring chicken anyway. What are you like, 37 or 36 or something like that? Like 34, I think. 35, that's still, 35. Yeah, it's still getting up there a little bit. He's getting up there. And it's not like he's way bigger either. Because, uh, I mean, weigh ins, they weighed in about the same last time, but they're both 6'3. Heidemann's got a tiny bit of a reach. But like everybody's picking Nunez on tapology so far. It's like 82%. I got pulled yeah. up on my other my other laptop here. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like. If you're, it's hard to pick underdogs on a PFL card, especially early in the regular mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna take one, it's gonna be a short notice one like this, where they kind of just think, "Oh, Heiderman's trash because he lost in the Ultimate <laughs> Fighter." But I don't know if he's that trash. He fought a dude who had the worst physique I've ever seen. In the <laughs> I was like, "What is this? What?" He he looked like a cartoon in there, that giant fat brown dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a, his level of competition that he's fought hasn't been great. But he hasn't looked terrible in any fight. Well, yeah, that's true. I can't remember any fight. He's just looked terrible. So, I mean, and he has a win over Chandler, Chandler Cole, which obviously isn't saying a lot. But, I mean, they gave him a contender, contender series shot after the Ultimate Fighter. So, they must think something of Chandler Cole. So, I mean, I mean, I don't know. He doesn't have – it's not like he has, like, terrible wins. Um, Dude, not, not the fighting style, but when I was watching him, his fights, I was like, dang, he reminds me of Chelsea Chandler, just the haircut and how pale he is. That's and hilarious. Like, like, forward. I was like, yo, it's the male Chelsea Chandler right here. You made me like him just a little bit less. <laughs> oh, damn. That's hilarious. Okay, well, we can move on. Uh, we're on opposite sides on this one, but it doesn't sound like you've got a hot take on it. It just kind of kind of is what it is. So I get that. Um, we have another short notice matchup. I'll take this one away at first. Um, it's Elvin, um, Elvin Espinosa taking on Adam Piccolotti. Now, Espinoza is undefeated, so that's, you know, going to make him kind of look, you know, look, look a little appealing. But I think this is a huge step up in competition for him, and Piccolotti's no joke. And I think Piccolotti's going to be able to get this one done just by being that bet. And originally, Elvin was supposed to fight Anthony Romero. Yep. And I think that was a more uh, reasonable matchup for him. I think Piccolotti's just going to be way too much, but... I don't know. What do you think on this one? Do you feel like there's a big step up for him, or do you think it's going to be that the undefeated guy stays undefeated? 
Dude, I'm going with Elvin still. I was going to pick okay. against Adam, and I was going to pick Elvin in his original matchup with Romero. Mm-hmm. But, dude, these are some pretty high-level fights to start the card. This one, at least, for sure. Um, I really I like the Romero fight originally. For but, sure. Yeah, this comes down to... I think Espinosa should be able to reverse Piccolati, man. I, like, I know he's going to get taken down in this fight. There's no shot he doesn't. And I think in the clinch, he'll be able to reverse positions you know, along the cage. And on the feet, I think he'll have a slight speed advantage, but he is a little bit undersized. Um but it's weird. He has a longer reach, but he will be the smaller guy. And I feel like Piccolati, you know, the veteran here, is just, you know, had way more experience. And he's going to, you know, I don't think Elvin's going to show him anything he hasn't seen type thing. And and for his, you know, being undefeated, I know like the level of competition isn't the greatest. But, man, I feel like he he's pretty quick. With it. Like, I like him. I, I know he's small, but I'm going with Elvin in this fight. And I want to see this grappling, man. I'm really excited for the grappling exchanges in this fight for sure. Dude, I love that we've had two fights already and we're on opposite side of both of them. <laughs> so this is this is oh. great. Yeah, chat, I know will you I'm think, weigh in on this, everybody in the chat, so we get some some deal, some tiebreakers here, huh? There, there's another one coming soon, but you're gonna be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> but, oh, right. dude, I swear. I, if we're okay, there's a couple. If we're on the opposite side, I'm gonna I'm gonna be so confused because some <laughs> of these are some of these are gimmies, I think. But uh, but we can move on to the next one. I feel like that one we're flying through these, but that that one was uh, that one's cut and dry. It's like, do you think the hype doing prospect is getting it done, or do you think the grizzled vet is getting it done? It's kind of what that is. So whatever side you land on. Um, next one, Godzi Rabadanov take on Sol- takes on Solomon Renfro. I'll let you kick this one off. What do you think and why? Dude, I'm going with Solomon. Uh, <laughs> why is he weighing 155, dude? No, nah, this is more of like a Cody Brundage and uh, Bo Nickel type situation here. Like, Godzi is going to try to wrestle and get this fight down. Like, there's no shot in hell he's going to, you know, spend minutes at range here. He's going to get his head clobbered off like against Solomon, man. But, dude, it's so funny. Uh, like, this dude lost to my boy Adam Fugit, dude. Like, you can't be losing to Adam Fugit, you know, on the regions and getting hectic five straight times, you know, without changing anything. But Solomon's not the best fighter. Like, but dude, I was shocked at this line. And I actually think that Godzi or this dude Godzi, I know he's with um, well, he was with Habib's team. I feel like he's just one of the worst fighters to come out that Jim Hammond to gear. Like they're on the lower end of that camp, and he should be the favorite. And he, he has way better experience, way better wins, and I'll, honestly obey better overall skill set, but I'm going. I'm, I'm. This is my Cody Brundage pick of the of the night, dude. This is a. I think he should be a huge underdog. I can't believe he's making 155, um, but he is a little bit small, like in the frame. But he's built. He, like, he's stacked at 170. So I'm kind of surprised the, that he's he's coming down. So did so, the yeah. line blow up or something? Last I saw, uh, Rabadov was only like minus 180. Dude, I saw him at minus 240. At like, oh, I don't know if it's come back down or or what. Because I bet Rabadonov at minus 180. That's uh, good. That's I had him parlayed with JJ Wilson, so now I have a money on him, uh, which is stupid. <laughs> yeah, see, like, that. yeah, that would be more like I would yeah. be more enticed to lay that, but then, yeah, I mean, Solomon is not very good, guys. Like, he is not good. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, guys. He is not good. This is more of like a one shot. He needs to land a one shot punch. And I just don't think Godzi or Godzi, I keep saying Godzi, Godzi is that good on the feet. Yeah, I think uh, I think he can lay on him though. I think that's what he's probably yeah, gonna do. Yeah, I, he's gonna lay yeah. on him for three rounds and get the win. Um, I I don't think because is because which fights are officially part of the bracket? Like, is this one one of them? I can't remember now. I, I think so. I think, I think so. so. Yeah, because I don't think the the Piccolotti Espinosa one is or is it because of the change? I don't know. There's some. Oh, that's that's true. I don't know now because of the change either. Yeah, uh, so, they might have uh, tweeted Piccolotti it. was originally. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. We'll but find I do out. like that with PFL, how like they have like like they're enticed to like finish the fight earlier and like there's points for it and stuff. Like it makes it more interesting. Like I know like, some people don't like it, but like to me, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like kind of goes into their game plan or how they want to fight and you mm-hmm. know stuff like that. I like that about it. I don't like anything else about their like their format. Okay, actually, I don't I don't hate the format. What I hate is that they really try to pander to the sports ball audience, and every time on the brad the broadcast, all you see in the corner is like we're the only MMA. A league with a <laughs> season and playoffs. I'm like, I, that's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Oh, it just makes me feel like dumb watching that. Like, I see that, I see him say that. And I'm like, ah, stop. That's like somebody like really excited about to like tell you something that makes them sound dumb. And then you're like friends with them. So, like, people think <laughs> you are dumb with them. Like, that's what I, ah, I hate that. I really hate it. But it's all whatever. Other than that, I do like the, I like the, like, oh, if you get a finish earlier, it's worth, more like for the thing but i don't know I, I both like and hate the pfl model so it's it's tough Dude, 
this one was interesting because it's just lightweights and light heavyweights. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these guys are like fought each other, and like, yeah. you watch one fight, they're kind of watching a fight for another guy. It's kind of interesting, dude. It makes but, tape study so much easier. In fact, yeah, yeah, I do like true. that. Yeah, it was interesting. I was like, I kept doing it. I was like, oh fuck, this is, keep on fighting. There's like a circle. Just watch this. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it was yeah. So funny. what I started doing for the PFL, um, even for like Bellator when they do their Grand Prix, was um, I would just I'd make a note of anybody that crossed over. And then if it was like within the last like five years or whatever that otherwise it wasn't really that relevant, but I'd still watch it. But you know what I mean? Um, just to like just to see how they went together. But usually within the last five years, it's actually worth watching. Um, and then I would say, OK, everybody that's that's done this, I'm going to have both sheets of notes out in front of me and just be jotting down notes for both guys while I'm watching the fight. Um, saves a lot of time, especially when you got multiple cards per week, like Bellator, PFL, you know, UFC, all this stuff like, mm-hmm. whew, but UFC 300 and this in the same week it has been wild. Thankfully, UFC 300 was pretty easy to do tape study. Yeah, like yeah. all of it's right there on either ESPN Plus or or Fight Pass or whatever. Like no problem. So, dude, does this ever happen to you where you go? Oh, this happens to me in the UFC fights, but like you'll go to watch a fight on Fight Pass and it doesn't work all the time. I'm Bro, like, like it totally makes me so fight. mad, dude. <laughs> I'm like, why am I paying for this? What the hell? None of this? them work. None of dude. the old UFC stuff works. It's only the only stuff that works is like the regional stuff. Which I need it for that, especially when it comes to like contender series, because I always do my yeah. contender series breakdowns. In fact, they're actually the like biggest, like the most viewed thing on my channel by like a landslide. Nice. Nice. But um, but yeah, like so I gotta keep five pass for that, but I almost wanna cancel for most of the year and, and then just pick it up during contender series time because it doesn't work. The the worst is where you're like, all right, cool, this sounds like a good good fight to watch. Like it probably has relevancy for the five, you know prepping for and then nope doesn't work like what the usually if it's a ufc <laughs> fight you can pull it up on espn plus though yeah 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 which it's That's just annoying good. having to switch mm-hmm. what thing you're doing but whatever um okay next one is actually a crazy fight that i do have a bet on because i think the line is just went weird today um we have bruno miranda taking on brent premise um let's see i think you started the last one so i'll take this one away i think brent premise should be a pretty big favorite here and I got him at plus 100 today on DraftKings, and I have no idea why. That makes no sense to me. Primus is the far better fighter, if you ask me. Now, it's not like Miranda's bad, but Primus is going to be able to take him down and mug him. I think he submits him probably in the first two rounds. Uh, like, Primus has fought some very good guys. Um, his last loss got thrown out, obviously, because uh, homeboy tested positive for some drugs. <laughs> but, uh, but, like, okay, you look at his losses. He has a loss to Shabley. Okay, fine, right? That's I mean, Shabley's a beast. His other loss, split decision to Islam Mamadov, split decision, close fight. And then you got to scroll way back to his loss in 2018 to Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler in 2018 was, was still top mm-hmm. tier, right? Right. That was guy was, was fantastic. You look at some of his wins. Like, I mean, he beat Benson Henderson, whatever. Beat Mansar Barnui. Barnui is a decent win. Um, Tim Wilde is a good win, even though you might not think so. You can't really count the, uh, the win over uh, Michael Chandler because, I mean, you can, but like, you know, it was the ankle thing. Yeah. But like, dude's beating some good guys. I don't think Bruno Miranda's. I don't think he's got the grappling chops to to hang with a guy like Primus. And I think Primus is going to take him down. I think he's going to be able to submit him. But what do you think? I think I, I agree, and I couldn't agree oh, more, does. especially with his losses. Like, and well, obviously on my screen, I'm seeing he's a minus three thirty one thirty five favorite. What are the odds right now? Uh, because they might have changed. It was middle of the day. I actually sent Couch Warrior a message when I saw it because we were both talking about it last week. Um, let's pull up fight odds. And like when I saw that that drop, because I like throughout my day, I I'm like such a degenerate. I keep fightodds.io up and I refresh it like constantly throughout the day. Like whenever I get a minute between clients, because I'm an absolute degenerate weirdo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, DK right now has him at what we got. Now he's at minus 125. But earlier yeah, today, yeah. he was at plus 100 for a little while, like middle of the afternoon, um, which is wild. So yeah. that's, I feel like if you're betting on Miranda here, you, you just bet him inside the distance because there's no shot he's going to win a three round fight. Like he's going to be spending, if this, if this goes all 15, then he probably spent most of his minutes, you know, getting grappled. I've grappled, like getting that Russell fucked. Um, and yeah, dude, like to not get finished by Usman, who's on steroids. Like that's a that's impressive, dude. Like Fair. I know he got dominated, kind of, but dude, he's old and still fighting, man. Like 
I, I really agree with your points about who his losses are coming to, man. Miranda is just not on that level. Yeah, I know he's a good striker. I know like, he comes from a good camp, but like he, he can get put down, dude. And and yeah, man, that's just going to be his game plan. I feel like it's a theme for the card, man. There's a lot of wrestlers on this card, a lot of grapplers that are going to try to outgrapple their opponents. So I think Brent is, is going to get it started off pretty good. So for the, I think it's the first time we agree, huh? This is our first agree, right, yeah, cool. which is I, wild. So watch him get slept. So, <laughs> so <laughs> no. I was just thinking that. like, I was like, well, how can I make this worth it? So I technically, if I have premise at plus 100, I could technically place a free bet for the mm-hmm. equal units on Miranda inside the distance. And uh, then I just got to hope for that to make any profit. But I think I wish I got him a little bit better than plus 100. So I'd profit either way. But uh, yeah. I think premise wins at such a high clip that I'm, I don't think I'm going to play it. But yeah, yeah I mean, I got I to say premise. Miranda's quick. It does have some speed on him and it should be interesting in the clinch. But I feel like he just loses those positions at a high clip. So I, I guess whether we tripped or, you know, on open map. But yeah, I agree. Uh, premise and that line. I think it's moving for a reason. A lot of, feel like a lot of people agree too. Yeah, I don't know why it got down to plus one hundred. It wasn't on any other book. Uh, on most of them, it was like the closest he got was like minus one hundred two on Bet Online. I think it was, but that plus that plus one hundred. I was like, dude, once you hit that plus, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> His age scares me a bit, but like, nah, I'm in. Yeah, uh, yeah. We we agree on one though. This is good. This is good. Let's move on to the next one and see if we can agree here. Um, we have uh, God, what the hell? Uh, uh, Dov. Oh, dude, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Yuck Shemiradov, um, and he's taking on uh, Jacob uh, Neto. Uh, this is Neto's first appearance in the regular season, I believe. He's uh, fought for PFL for their like um, uh, PFL Europe. Uh, Yuck Shemiradov is obviously the Bellator. Okay, real quick before we sidetrack. When you look at their cards, the PFL cards this year, are you in your head being like, "Oh, that's a PFL guy. Oh, that's a Bellator guy." Are you? Do you do that? No, I didn't. I didn't even notice until I saw the graphics. Like they would put like next to their name, like former mm-hmm. Bellator. I'm like, oh, like all right. But I mean, obviously, you look into it, like you find out. But like, uh, it's I don't know. I think it's interesting a little bit. I'm sure like the Bellator guys want to win. Oh, you know, for you sure. Wanna, you don't want to get punked by like your new like you know organization like that. But yeah, most of these guys will have a lot of experience coming over. Yeah. So oh yeah, most of the Bellator like guys have way regions. more experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And most of the Bellator guys are better, but not all of them. <laughs> most of them are better, to be honest. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that comes with experience. Yeah, it's definitely true. But what do you think about this one? Yagshir Murdov versus Neto. Well, who do you got and why? I'm pretty low confident on this one. This one, I kind of hope you can sway me. I'm going with, was it Jakob or Jacob? Because um, I, th- I think it's Jacob uh, or Jakob. I'm going with Neto. Jakob. But he seems to be, you know, pretty finish dependent in this fight. Uh, this giant Russian hairy dude on the other side, like, he seems to be pretty. I have more experience, well rounded. You know, has a pretty good skill set, but lately he hasn't been grappling as much. I feel like Correct. if he wants to stand, like that's just not the highest IQ move for him. If he does go out there and wrestle, I feel like he, you know, could have some success in this fight. It's a pretty closely lined fight, but you know, he's 34 years old getting up there. So I'm going with Jacob, man. He has a little bit slightly more power, more uh power on his shots, in my opinion. I feel like his shots will matter more, whereas the uh this Russian dude should has to like add on and accumulate more volume. Um but yeah, man, give me Jacob. Dude, we're on the same page again. I love it. We're finally on track. We just nice. took us a minute. We just had to get our, get our bearings going. We had to, we had I was to getting crazy up. in the beginning, man. I was, I was, I was firing so, bullets. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it happens. It happens. Uh, Neto's probably going to get the finish here, and I don't think um, – so I, I'm not confident in it either because I, I do think that Yagshin Miradov obviously has enough experience that he could, you know, teach him a, that veteran lesson, right? I mean, Yagshin Miradov. Has um, okay, so first Neto, Neto has nine fights. Jan Shamirov has twenty one wins alone. So like more than double the number of fights Neto has. Jan Shamirov has wins. Like that's pretty impressive. So I mean, he could just get a veteran lesson, but I do think Neto's a powerhouse. I think he, he probably can get the knockout here. Um, he's looked sharp thus far. His only loss, I believe was his first MMA fight. And that happens to a lot of guys. His first pro MMA fight. Um, I guess I didn't ever look at his amateur record, but either way, his only loss as a pro is in his first pro fight. Looked good ever since. Sure. The level of competition is going to be much lower than what Yagshir Miradov is fighting, but I'm, I'm going to side with him here. I'm probably not going to bet it. It's a watch and see. And this, this fight here, if Neto pulls this one off impressively, we're going to know this dude's going, going places. And if he doesn't, if he gets that vet test, it's kind of what it is. Um, but next, we've got a really slick fight with uh, 
in, uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. taking on Simon uh, Biong. I think is how you say that, Biong. Uh, Biong is kind of a – he was one of those guys that Bellator was trying to push early, and then he kind of stumbled along the way. Still got some good wins, but, like, he stumbled, right? And I believe he's got a loss to uh, Christian Edwards at some point in his career. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Christian Edwards, yeah. And that's kind of where you were like, oh, this guy's not what we're looking for because Christian Edwards is not what we're looking for either. Uh, <laughs> that kind of made Bellator second guess. But uh, now he's fighting Antonio Carlos Jr., who's like jujitsu incarnate, right? Um, I, you know, for me, I think you got to go with, uh, with with Junior here because I think I think if he gets this fight to the mat, it's over. I think his jujitsu is just lights out. But he, I mean, if he doesn't get it to the mat, he's obviously in trouble. Uh, but yeah, I do. I think that maybe you could argue the lines wide, but I, I think he subs him at a pretty high rate. So, what do you think? Uh, do you think that the, the subs live for for Junior? I don't know if you can if that's even worth playing, or do you think Beyond can keep it on the feet and knock him out? Well, well, first of all, I'm going with Junior as well. We do agree again. Uh, but as far as betting the sub or, or knockout, that's just so interesting because if he gets it down, I hate doing those because. Like, there's really no difference in this guy giving up his back, turtling up, or getting mounted, and then a, a ground pound finish happening, or him t- giving up his back and him snatching up the neck. Um, it's just so 50 50 in those spots, but I think the sub is the way to go. I think the grappling, sure. you know, disparity here is huge. Um, but Simon is huge, man. He has a crazy long reach, crazy tall frame. And this guy, Antonio, hasn't fought in forever. He's had a huge layoff. I've heard these crazy things about this reality show, you know, some crazy nonsense like going on with him. Um, outside the octagon so it's that's a way we're some for sure but i understand why he's a pretty big favorite and i gotta agree man i know he's an older fighter here but just like you said man like once he gets it down the fight should probably end shortly after i i really think that simon's like a like a white belt dude like <laughs> i don't want to talk you know bad about the guy but you know i just think that's the way the fight's gonna go if he wants to stand at range for 15 minutes he's giving simon the fight he wants so i don't think that's gonna happen so i think he's gonna be you know passing this iq test and be like you know what get this guy on my face get him down and let's get out of here so yeah i'm going with uh acj so if it makes you feel any better about playing the sub over the like inside the distance, even though the inside the distance is like plus one Oh five and subs like plus one thirty, I just pulled it up. Uh, Junior's only got, he's got 11 submissions, zero knockouts and four wow. decisions. So like, I feel like you're, he's I don't, gone. I don't feel like he's going to all of a sudden go for it, especially against a guy that's basically a white belt. But, but yeah, like I, normally, especially when the line's that close one Oh five to one thirty, I would just play that too. But I might, I might throw a couple of bucks on the, I don't know. I'm already really exposed this weekend because I have a bet on every fight for UFC 300 except for the first fight because I, I just want to watch that one and enjoy it. I don't I don't want to bet on that one. I, I like I'm a big fan of both of those guys. I don't want to bet on it, but I've got something on every single fight outside of that, and I've got some exposure on this PFL card. So like I could definitely just get run through this week if things don't Dude, go my way. I I couldn't agree more, man. I'm looking at all these fights. And I'm like I can't bet this fight. I can't bet this fight. I already have too many bets. Like I was talking to uh, some of my buddies. I was like, this sucks. I want to have like three more bets I want to make, but dang, I already have a bunch of bets. And it's yeah. just such a good card on, on 300 for sure. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, man, like I don't want to like add to my bankroll just to make a bet. Cause I've already bet way too much. Like, I, I mean, I'm not at that point yet, but like at the same time, like it's, it could get there if I went wild on this PFL card. Um, <laughs> real quick. I want to shout out MMA clips in the chat. Always in my comment section, hilarious. Always, <clears throat> always coming with the jokes. Always coming with the fun. So MMA clips, one of the real ones. I appreciate the heck out of you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, but yeah, dude, this PFL card has some spots that I do like, but I just, I've only bet like three or four of them. So nothing crazy. I mean, I um, like JJ, yeah. dude. I like JJ in that fight. Damn. <laughs> you like who? Uh, JJ Wilson that got canceled. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah JJ. Was, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a good spot. I feel like. Yeah, like who we look? Oh yeah, yeah. Once it got canceled, I was like, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's out of my brain. Oh, it's gone. Gone. Okay, so yeah. Sadi Musai versus Josh Silvera. Uh, mm-hmm. This one was tough for me, and not because I think, not because I think Silvera is like top tier, but I think that he has advantages in places that Sadi Musai does not, and I think that could be a problem for him. But uh, I've gone back and forth on this one. Maybe you've got a stronger take. What do you think? Oh, dude, I'm going, I'm fading Sadi Busai in this fight. I haven't bet it. I don't like foresee myself doing it. But because I am like down on the year on UFC, so I have to be super stingy with my bets. You know, sure. <laughs> I don't want to make the hole even bigger. But like this comes down to can Josh get him down because that range is going to get picked apart. What's crazy to me is how is Sadi Busai going up so fast? Like, 
that's a huge, huge, you know, weight jump here. So to wait at 170, just what, four months ago to come up at 205. Like, that's crazy. Like, am I like losing my mind or like, well, that's two he's whole weight classes. Dude, dude, but yeah. But yeah, he does. He has a huge frame and he's actually the bigger guy. Like, so, you know, it's actually kind of interesting. But yeah, man, I think Josh wins this fight. I think he gets him down. Like, he, as long as he doesn't get knocked the hell out on the feet, like, which, you know, obviously is the way Sadi Bulai wants to go, but. He has those crazy kicks. You know, he's got to be careful closing the range, but it should be an interesting fight. I don't see you going the distance for sure, but yeah, give me the underdog in this fight. It sounds like the chat kind of agrees. Uh, did you have, did you have to play him when he was actually still plus money? No, no, no. I just knew he was the underdog. When I, when I went to start the tape, like he was the underdog. There was a few fights where I didn't know the odds going into it, but I, I knew Josh was the underdog. Oh, I guess I don't know if he is now. Plus money on DraftKings at plus 114. So that's something. Um, but yeah, it sounds like the chat agrees with you here because, um, yeah, like Sai moving up, that two weight classes is weird. Um, you know, Silvera does have a pretty good chance on the ground. Sai could pull it off. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm looking at this thinking, like, you know, is there a way I can, I can, I can win on either side? And then I was like, nah, that's not worth it. But, um, but yeah, like, there you go. Like like uh, like Mountain Bet says, the price is pretty much gone on Josh. But even then, if you think he wins, you know more than half the time. I mean, if you took him, I mean, if you took him at like plus one fourteen, that's not a bad bet at all. Like I don't mind that. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'll probably pass on it to be honest. I was looking at trying to play them both. I was leaning Cy earlier today because he's he's going to have the striking edge, right? Yeah, I mean, he's going to be faster too. Yeah, but the then he gets to the be... mat. Yeah. But that's just so weird, man. He's like 37 years old going up to weight classes. Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that either. The age, I don't like that either. But he's a yeah. massively good striker. But he also isn't like knocking a bunch of guys dead either. So that's true. So because like his last couple fights went to decision. Am I right or am I wrong? I think, yeah, his last fight did, right? Yeah, I know his last one did. Or not his last one because the last one was lost. His last win. Yeah, his last win was Carlos Leal. That's right. Went to decision. But I guess before that he was knocking guys out, but that was earlier in the PFL playoffs or whatever. But yeah, whenever he fights like the guys that are in the playoff, like in the higher the playoffs, God, I hate playoffs. Uh, whenever he's fighting those guys, he's going <laughs> to decision. But when he's fighting guys that aren't that good, then he's knocking them out. So yeah, uh, but he got subbed in his last fight too. Ooh, I might switch to Silvera here. Oh, that's tough. Like I'm not big on Silvera. Me neither, though. Yeah, but it's just like. There's ways for him to win. Like even that range, like if he does get deaded, then then you know you gotta give it up to Sai. But you know if he gets him down, man, like we're gonna be sitting here like, oh damn, like he was plus one forty, plus one thirty, like damn. You might have you might have convinced me to switch. I might switch that to Silvera. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I am. I think I'm gonna switch to Silvera. I think you guys. I think you guys are right. Um, I've been going back and forth on it, so nothing too crazy. Um. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's like I mean, Eclipse says, like his striking looks awkward. Definitely. If he gets stuck on the feet, he's toast. But I do mm -hmm. think like on the grappling, he has a big, big advantage. Yeah. And I don't I don't think Sai can keep it on the feet the whole time. I don't think he can. Um, he doesn't look awful at two or five. That's true. That's true. I check my That's topology picks for my final pick. <laughs> for the video, I'm gonna agree with you guys here and say say Silvera. But uh Ah, uh, it's tough. It's tough. Another one. Yeah, he's old. He's like 37. <laughs> like, you guys have me convinced. But at the same time, like, he's such – he's like the way better the, striker. What worries me, yeah, the, what worries me is the speed. The speed is, should mm -hmm. be should be pretty obvious here. But, I mean, who knows? Maybe, like, the new weight class is a little more weight. He slows down, you know, towards the end of the fight. But Even if he slows down quite a bit, though, he's still going to be way faster. <laughs> like, he yeah. doesn't slow down Dangerous a lot. Dangerous, too. Yeah. Like, is he, like, wearing, like, wrist weights, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe he looks – like shredded on the scales. That's true. Yeah, maybe this this will be one that like tomorrow, like after the weigh-ins, we'll figure mm -hmm. out a little bit better because because like if he looks like he's still going to be quick, yeah, might have to might go. Ah, we'll we'll see. Keep an eye on the topology picks for my final pick. Uh, but we'll move on. We don't have to we don't have to beat this one to death. Uh, Mads Brunel taking on Michael Duf, uh, Dufort. Uh, you know, I think I'll start this one off. It's really really simple. Mads Brunel is probably going to win this fight. I think both guys probably going to get this fight in the in the grappling exchanges. I think I think Brunel is a way better grappler. I actually I'm a pretty big fan of Brunel. I have a ton of notes on him. Um, we're not going to go through all of them, but I think Brunel is pretty good. And in fact, I actually have a soft spot for Brunel for the simple fact that it was a it was a Bellator bro breakdown I did a while back, and I think 
Brunel's fighting son of a gun. Let me see if I can remember based on based on his record. It'll jog my memory. Yes, Justin Gonzalez. One of Justin Go Gonzalez's friends, like his personal friends, was in my in my comments section. I didn't know they were personally friends at first. He was just like really ripping on me for picking Max <laughs> Brunel. Like he was just so like mad about it, right? That's funny. And I was like. I, I was very complimentary of, of Gonzalez in that breakdown too, because Gonzalez is good. Like he's not bad. His last five fights, he hasn't looked the best, but it's like he's fighting killers in the division, right? So I picked Burnell and I was like, yeah, he's just gonna, he's just gonna be able to out grapple him in these exchanges and stuff. And this guy's getting mad. And I'm eventually I'm like, this guy's taking this way too personal. I'm like, are you guys like friends? Are you friends with Gonzalez? No so, way. Like, you call him out like mad at you for picking your buddy. And he's like, yeah, that's my, my bud. We've been friends for like, since like high school. I'm like, yeah, dude, like I get it. Like, I don't blame it at all. Blame it at all. <laughs> like, but at the same time, Brunel won. So I was able to go back to that and be like, told you so dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it. <laughs> because of course I got to spike the football, right? Like, that's like what Hey, how did, how did it feel when your boy got out grappled? Huh? What happened? Yeah. Yeah. How's your, <laughs> how your, how your boy doing now? You know, did he, did he skip wrestling day, huh? Wrestling That's right. on Tuesday. <laughs> and Brunel looked good in that fight. Like he's he's still got it. Like I mean, he's he's been around the game a long time. Like I don't think yeah. he's that old, but he's like mid thirties at least, right? Yeah, I, I thought he's no, he's thirty. Only thirty. Holy. Crap. I know, bro. I thought the same thing. I was like, I thought he was like thirty nine. <laughs> Dude's younger than I am. Like I swear. <laughs> like what in the world? But this fight here. So, okay, so at only thirty, like I'm even more confident. Yeah, Maz Brunel's getting this one done. I feel pretty good about him. I think he's gonna be the far better wrestler. I thought he was way, I think he was at least older than I am, but apparently not. Um, apparently, I, I, this has happened to me more and more though, where I'm like, oh, you know, he's got to be at least my age. And like, I'm realizing that I'm just getting way old. <laughs> so there is that. But Effie, what do you think in this one? Do you think Burnell's got it? Or do you think Dufort's going to get this one? Yeah, we're, we're agreeing again. I'm going with Burnell in this fight. And on my screen, I see Typology has him at minus 290, but I think the odds are at minus 200 now That's for Burnell. So that means that money came in on the on the underdog here. Um, that's kind yeah. of surprising because Dufort's gonna have to out grapple him. Like that's what he's good at. Like he's a good wrestler himself. I mean, he's a good grappler. It's funny that he's coming from cage times. Did you remember? Um, fuck, who's the damn? I just forgot his name. There's a UFC fighter who had like three fights with Owen three, then left. He fought. Um, uh, who's the eighteen old Rosas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who? Uh, Jay Perrin. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure cage. Uh. Jay Perrin's running cage times in his division now, too, which is actually kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, man, Dufour has some pretty good submissions. It's funny. That, that Luis Pena win was pretty good, man. Um, yeah. Luis Pena is a super tall long, so it's actually kind of easy to submit those guys, in my opinion. They have super long limbs. Um, they're kind of more easy to maneuver than, like, a short, bulky guy. But he's a good grappler, man. I like the guy's grappling, but I feel like the line's, you know, pretty accurate. I, I'm actually thinking about a, a Burnell and Godzi parlay. I feel like you talked me into the Alpha Solomon. Hey, there uh, we go. So I don't mind that, that you know that play. I'm sure it's coming out to so it's still a little bit minus money. I'm, well, I'm not sure. I don't know the, the prices on that, but yeah, man, give me Mads Brunel. I feel like he's a better grappler in this fight on the feet. He's a way better striker. So I feel like he has more volume, with better experience. I don't see why I should be picking do four unless I'm going to pick him to submit Brunel, which I don't think happened. So give me Brunel. Yeah, looking at Dufort's record, I think he's got he says he's got nine submission wins. So yeah, I mean, like yeah. there's a chance he catches him, but like yeah, I think Brunel's gonna be good on in like i think he's say safe i think he, he's he's too good of a wrestler and he's got too good he's got too good of an ability to put the fight in the position he wants it to stay safe and i don't think we're gonna i don't think i think dufort's gonna catch him with like a guillotine or anything guillotines oh my god i catch flack for this all the time guillotines should not work <laughs> in high level should not if you're getting caught teens you're not grappling enough um, or like, or it's like one of those guys that just lights out guillotine, but very few. Like, uh, if you remember like Cody McKenzie from back in the day, I, I don't know if, I don't know how long you've been watching MMA, but like, if you remember Cody McKenzie if comes from Alaska FC or whatever, dude's got that <laughs> wild guillotine, just guillotines everybody. And it makes no freaking sense. You shouldn't be getting caught in guillotines unless it's somebody like that. Cause guillotines just don't work that well. You literally just have to get across their body. That's it. It's not that hard. But <laughs> so, it's funny. Uh, I mean, we talked about it a couple times. That guy, JJ Wilson, he has really good um, escapes, you know, sweeps from bottom. He has a Kimura soup that he likes to use. And when he was getting caught in on bar attempts, he does what I guess you're supposed to. Uh oh.
Houston, we have a problem. Well, that's not good, folks. Classical Andrew, you're from Alaska? You're from, from Anchorage? Yeah, Alaska FC. You remember Cody McKenzie? Dude used to fight, I believe, there like many years ago. I don't know what happened to Effie here. So we're just going to post you. Uh... Wait. Yeah, well, we lost him, but um, <laughs> well, he'll be back. So anyway, um, yeah, Alaska FC. Yeah, you remember the name? Yeah, not the guillotine. Dude, it was – so he would he would get these guys in this like – um, he would get these guys in this – it was like this like a side – like single arm kind of thing, like a weird – like look up Cody McKenzie, almost all of – on, on like topology thing. All of his wins are pretty much guillotines, and they're like a weird like modified guillotine. And like dude was just catching guys left and right with it. I think he was even on a season of The Ultimate Fighter. Um, if I'm not wrong. And like, it was the same thing. It was just guillotines. Like he wasn't the best fighter, but the dude could guillotine you, right? This dude could guillotine. That was his game. Um, MMA clips. What, what state is my gym in? I'm in Nebraska. Good old Midwest. Uh, we were known for corn and flat land. <laughs> so, um, but I'm in the only part of Nebraska that's like a city because most of it is just just farmland and i'm in the spot that's not whoa we've got effie oh. we back? we've got effie back Hi, yeah. Maybe. that was really weird dude you're you're here twice it shows oh what like, the hell have you backstage and here that's wild um there we go i don't remember what you were saying right before you disappeared yeah, no, like you just have to stop moving when you're getting armbarred. Like that's the best defense. Like just don't stop moving. Just whatever oh, okay, you do, okay. don't settle for position. Like keep moving. <laughs> so okay, so oh shoot, do I demo this and just show every? Okay, so I actually taught this armbar defense from uh from, to a couple of friends of mine that are fighters that didn't know it, and essentially all you have to do to get out of an armbar, um, you can't obviously you can't let them pull it all the way straight arm bent like about to snap but all you do is like a roll and then you stack and if you do that you get yep. out of the armbar every time and you end up in in, in side control but mm -hmm. like nobody does it they start doing this and they just try to like do this i'm like what are you doing <laughs> when you i see the when i see the hand lock thing i'm like oh god like your yep. fingers are the only thing stopping you right now dude <laughs> like well, then when they do this, <laughs> instead if you're going for the arm bar all you got to do then is you switch to the forearm slicer and then they're going to be like, oh, this really sucks. And they're either going to tap or let go. And then you can switch back to the arm bar. Like, I'm not even that good at jujitsu, guys. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I mean, my favorite is the stack. I feel like stacking is the best way. I mean, if you can, if you obviously get to your feet and, you know. Well, you don't want to stack like back. this where you just still are in the arm bar. Yeah. You got to you... stack. You got to do. All right. Hold on. Let's see if you guys work for me. You can see. It. Okay. So if you can see me, you got your here, right? And then you're gonna do a, like a roll through like that, and then you step. So you kind of like, did you guys, did you see that? Yeah, that, that was actually right on camera. I don't know if you can hear me, but that was right on camera. <laughs> okay, we're back to me demoing things again. I did this once on a live stream on, um, I think it was Blood Money's channel, and I they sure you, still bring it up all the time when I demo sure the it chat. Clips that, clip that chat. <laughs> Yeah, clip that. <laughs> uh, but that's the best armbar defense. As soon as they like you, you grab like this for a second when they're like when they're still trying to pull you back, because that way you don't end up snapping when you hit the mat with your back. But you, and then as soon as you hit the mat, so you can break the initial like jerk. What you do is then you say, okay, cool, you can have the arm. But as I spin and I stack you, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put you on your neck and I'm gonna fall right into side control. It's insane. I do that to people all the time when I'm rolling now, I understand like super high level guys are going to be able to get you, but in an MMA fight, when there's so many intangibles, that's the arm bar defense guys. Like somebody's going to clip this and then like put like all the instances of where it failed <laughs> and just like this, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Like guys, I'm a forever white belt. My white belt has like two little like black pieces of electrical tape on it. I think I'm pretty sure I don't ever use the gi anymore, but dude, I'm not that good. All right. I'm not that good. It's called a hitchhiker yeah. escape. There you go. Yeah. There's yeah. a proper name for it. Not just yeah. like roll, but Somebody's got it figured out, but yeah, dude. Like, I'm, su I'm surprised it's not called like a Haragushi Umiata, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm you, sure there's some sort of for weird, like, actual name for it, but <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's it's like all you you just no, but this thing's like good, man. Uh, 
this kid uh, do for it. Like his jujitsu is, is nasty. So he's legit. If they get some grappling exchanges. It should be fun. But I still trust uh, Burnell, man. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Back to the Wrestling. fights, right? Too good. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, you know what? MMA clips. You're welcome for that demo. And you know what? If you ever do come by Nebraska, you move here. Let me know. You're gonna you're gonna get. I'll give you a <laughs> discount on my membership. Just mention 138 MMA. There you That's go. Sick. Um, but yeah, like back to the fights. Um, we've only got three left, so we're actually flying through these. It's not that bad. We haven't been on that long. Not even an hour. So we're set. We're set. We're on good time. We're making good time. Um, but yeah, we're both on Burnell. I think he's the rightful side. Dufort could get him with a sub. Maybe a, maybe a hedge it with a sub. What is the Dufort sub line? Before we move on to the next one, let's find oh, this that's, sub. That's a good look, man, because I do feel like Brunel, I mean, he's going to be pushing the wrestling, so. Absolutely is. But he ain't getting caught in a guillotine. If he gets caught in a guillotine, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done with Brunel. He's banished. Don't get caught in guillotines. Uh, plus 400 for the sub. Money's come in on it. Well, that's plus 500. That's mm. almost worth throwing, like, a couple of bucks on. I mean, it's probably his win condition, unless he like if he out grapples Brunel and puts Brunel on ball and pins him and racks minutes that way. Like, because I don't no think way. he's gonna you know win a striking match. If he does that, like, I will be shocked. If he does that, he's way better than I think. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> it's 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 got to be a sub, and it's gonna be catching him with something. But like, yeah. like I said, like the things you catch guys with are like stuff that you should be able to get out of if you're a high level grappler or at least a pretty good level of grappler. And I think Brunel is. Uh, but we can move on to probably the most fun fight on the card, at least in my opinion. It's Clay Collard and Patricky Pitbull. This one, to me, is going to be fireworks for as long as it lasts. Um, like, obviously, Patricky's the lesser of the Pitbull brothers, obviously, but he's still fun, and he still goes in there and throws bombs. And he's still a talented fighter, so it's not like he's a trash can. Um, and then Clay Collard, on the other hand, like, yeah, that dude's just nothing but fun. That guy goes in there and just ready to throw hands. You hear PFL say he's the most exciting fight fighter in the lightweight division. That's a bit of a stretch, but he's darn close. Okay, so um, good fight. Who do you have in this one? Maybe you uh, maybe you got to take. I don't, but I, I feel pretty confident about one side. Oh man, that makes, that does not make me feel good. I have Clay Collard in this fight. I'm going with Clay. Um, yeah, Patricky's you know obviously the lower level of the Pibble brothers, but he's not bad. You know, not I feel bad. like he gets a bad rep just how good his other brother is. But, dude, man, losing to Shabili is not a bad look. I actually rate Shabili pretty high, man. That's a pretty good fighter, like, super well-rounded. is dangerous everywhere. And, yeah, man, he probably didn't lose that fight more often than not. He lost to Usman. And, and that's another tough matchup, man. Like, that guy's high-level on steroids. So, um, this is going to be exciting. I feel like Clay Collar is just a little bit more polished, a little bit quicker in every area. I feel like Patricky, those leg kicks are going to be, you know, a big factor in this fight. And he is dangerous himself, man. It's not like he's going to go out there and just get knocked the hell out, you know, super early in this fight. You know, he's going to be coming to fight. He's going to bring the fight to Clay, and it should be a bloody fight. But, you know, he's getting up there in age, man. He's, what, almost 39 years old? He just turned 38. Uh, man, I got to go with Clay Collard here. Um, yeah, I I'm signing with Clay. I agree. 100%. I agree. I think Clay gets him out of there in the third is what I think. I think mm -hmm. Patricky's tough enough to hang for a while. Um, maybe he gets him in the second, but I think he gets him out of there in the third. Um, unless we get like a like a doctor stoppage like we got against Queeley, where the first time uh, Queeley fought Patricky and – Clearly got him with that cut, stopped it. I think it was in the second. Um, but other than that, I think what happens is it's it's back and forth a bit early on. You know, both guys are landing some shots. But I think Collard's just going to put more on him. He's going to be able to get him get Patricky moving on the back foot. And I think Collard is going to be able to start landing better volume as the fight goes on. And come the third round, I think he's going to be able to TKO him. Probably not knock him cold, but I think he's going to be able to TKO him just by overwhelming, overwhelming him with those strikes, pressure, aggressiveness i think that's what's going to get done for him so yeah I, I feel pretty good about clay collard um wish i could bet it but it's like minus two something at this point it's probably worse at this point oh, he's uh oh he's only minus 200 okay but still i mean but yeah. still you know like do i want to lay minus 200 on a fight that it's going to be a uh you know a couple of guys throwing hammers at each other maybe not but the tricky like, speed still like it's not it's not gone. Like his speed's right. still pretty decent. Like it's just like you say, like as the fight goes, that's probably more likely his speed will fade. And that's when, you know, like you said, the, the forward pressure. In. And Patricky gets cut up a lot now. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he, he gets cut up a lot. Now I know Collard does too, but like not like, like Patricky's a bleeder, you know, some guys like, it's kind of like we, everybody all thought about Nate Diaz like that. He's bleeds, uh. right? Just a bleeder. <laughs> you got uh, cut by the Vaseline guy putting it on. He's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, caked it on like like a like a like a like a girl in middle school going through puberty she's just caking on the makeup that's what we that's what we got going on with like guys trying to put vaseline on and stop that bleeding you know uh, dude I, I saw this clip of uh 
I think the tweet was like, yo, like the UFC would never cheat for their hometown guys. And it was William Gomez in, well, I think it was William Gomez in, in France. And mm. the, it's like between rounds, the cut man just comes, dude, and like drenches him. I was like, oh, that's hilarious, dude. Like, <laughs> oh, I couldn't even see after. I was like, that's so funny, man. Dude, you know, that's the thing. Like, try to get every edge you can, right? I guess. I mean, I don't know. Mus- Muslims, you know, in Abu Dhabi, stuff like that. You got you to lean into it. You got to. <laughs> And I mean, if you can get away with it, like what, the whole thing about George St. Pierre using the like baby oil or whatever. Oh. I don't know. I don't know how true that is. It sounds like it might be, but do what you can. Dude, so real fast. Do you remember when Cheeto, I don't know where said, uh, Sean O'Malley's hair was like slippery or something after he got dominated for five rounds and like you had the clinch maybe twice. Um, so after that happened, GM three, Gerald Mearshart tweeted out like, um, has anyone else noticed like your opponent is more slippery recently? And he said that it's because um, he, well, at least he thinks uh, people are using like this rubbing like stuff on you to cut weight, to help you cut weight or whatever. Uh-huh. And then the next day it comes out, like, it's like, it helps your skin. He said, and I was oh. like, Oh shit. Like, but it's one of those where like you put it on to like, help you lose weight or whatever, but, uh, or for the weight cut. But yeah, he's saying that uh, two fights in a row for him, his opponents have, have felt slippery. And I was like, Oh geez. <laughs> that checks out you know now that you mentioned that i do know a lot of people that are doing the like that like rub stuff or whatever for the weight cut that could be something there could be something to that i wonder if that'll get banned at some point yeah or if they just won't care <laughs> i bet it gets banned at some point i do i bet it does um especially when like you know like a high level grappler loses a matchup that they were supposed to win and then it's like we gotta we gotta look into this stuff <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, it's it's just one of those weird things. I don't even know how it's possible to take something, put it on your body the next day, and it still mm-hmm. affects your skin. Yeah, yeah. If you, so, like, guys fighting on the regional scene can get away with this easy because there's nobody that like checks up on it. It's like if you take a bath in baby oil essentially the night before. No um, way, dude. Like no way. It. And then you, that's, that's you know, wild. You shower like you don't have to like it don't have to be fully submerged, but you essentially just drench yourself in this stuff and like sit there for a while. Uh, and then you shower off a little bit, right? But then when, like, but you like, you know, whatever. And then when you go, and you have to do this post, like, post weight cut because you don't want to like sweat it all out. Uh, but then when you go to fight, you're yeah, and you start sweating. All of a sudden, that baby wheel starts coming out a little bit, and it's like, what in the world? Like, why is he so slippery? That's a real thing. I would do that shit a hundred percent. Why wouldn't you, right? I mean. Yep. I mean, if you feel like you need it, like you might as well use it. Like, I mean, it might cost you a little bit for baby oil. Maybe you can wear it back on your purse, right? But probably not on the regional scene. You don't get paid much, but, but like, it's a thing, you know. Dude, thing. Rob Rob Wilkinson should probably use some here. Avoid Tom Breeze. <laughs> he might need to. Uh, let's break that one down. Let's do it. So we've got we got Rob Wilkinson taking on Tom Breeze. Uh, this is an interesting one because wasn't the original matchup? It was Wilkinson and uh, Phil Davis. That's right. Uh, and then Tom Breeze stepped in, and Breeze is not a slouch. Like, yeah. Breeze is pretty good. I remember seeing this and thinking, like, at the odds, like, maybe Breeze is live, but Wilkinson's pretty pretty damn good as well. Um, but I think if this fight gets to the mat, this, this is, like, a this is a good spot for Breeze. Like, he's gotten some good wins, and most of his wins are submissions. But when you look at it, a lot of his wins are guillotines, and, like, I would hope that Wilkinson's not bad enough to get hit with a guillotine. <laughs> but... I don't know. Um, I'll take this one away, I guess. I'm going to take Wilkinson for the fact that I think he's going to be able to avoid things like guillotines, and I think he's going to have decent enough submission defense, but he could also get controlled for most of the fight. And Tom Breeze is a good grappler, like like really good grappler. What's he got? 13 submission wins. 13. Like, if he gets this to the mat, he's got a chance. And he's got wins over, like, decent guys. Like, he's got wins in the UFC even. Like, you know, I mean, not, yeah. not a ton, but he's got wins in the UFC. So, like, what's he got, like, a couple? uh five okay actually has more wins in the ufc than i thought um i guess i remember the losses more than the wins but, yeah. <laughs> but i mean like the dude's not bad so for wilkinson he's gonna want to keep it on the feet because the dude is most likely going to be the better striker here um but i think he's gonna be safe enough to avoid the guillotines i think he's gonna be safe enough to avoid like your standard chokes and stuff at at this point in his career wilkinson's looked pretty good as of late uh, i mean sure he's been on the roids but like yep Maybe he's still on the roids. Like they tested him or whatever, but it doesn't mean he stopped using them, I guess. I don't know. Uh, at the weigh ins, we'll find out real quick if he's still using them. But I think Wilkinson gets it done. What do you think and why? 
Yeah, dude, I gotta agree. I, I'm actually pretty confident in Wilkinson. It's like like one of my only confident ones on the entire card. Tom Breeze, though, very good top heavy grappler. Um, had a pretty decent run in the UFC, but like you said, the the losses are pretty bad. Look, um, you know, getting finished and stuff. But you know, he wasn't like a horrible fighter when he got cut. It's just one of those things where like there's just so many fighters, so many new you know talents. The contender series, like there's he was kind of mid, he kind of milled out and, and you know faded out of the UFC. But he's a good grappler, man. I respect his game. But the fact that he's on short notice and the fact that he's yeah. so kind of one dimensional, um. He's fighting a guy that just got caught using steroids with very heavy hands and a very powerful striker in his own right. So, yeah, man, I just feel like Tom's going to be uh, diving at the legs. He's super one-dimensional in this fight. He needs to grapple. And if Wilkinson could just sprawl and brawl, keep this upright, get those underhooks, and get him back up, keep you know, keep that range, I think he's all over Tom Breeze here. I think he, he knocks him out, and I think he finishes his fight and you know gets those points he needs for the season or whatever in PFL. <laughs> 100%. And I just looked up the Breeze subline, and it was open at plus 550. I would be tempted at that, but it's down to plus 350 and I am no longer tempted. Um, Cause like for the same reasons you kind of said, like, I mean, Wilkinson's better, right? I mean, he's yeah. like better, just a better fighter at this point. But you, like you also said, Breeze only has four losses in his career. So it's not like he got a bunch of losses and then, you know, it was, yeah. like, I mean, sure. Three of those were in the UFC, um, but like in three and out sometimes is a thing, but like the dude has yeah. wins and like, he's not bad. So I wouldn't be crazy surprised if he got gets a sub but i i don't i don't think so i think we got wilkinson here um the main event though this one is this one had me tempted like really tempted to bet polizzi when that line was plus four something plus 425 or something yesterday i was real tempted um oh, i didn't but plus 425 are you kidding me please he's not terrible like uh impa kasang and i 15 and 4 alex polizzi 10 and 3 polizzi's losses Okay, we'll, we'll break the matchup down, and I'll get my pick in a minute. But first off, like, like that line said that Polizzi was trash, right? The, the line said <laughs> Polizzi trash. Yes, the yeah. Carl Moore loss wasn't the best, but the Yoel Romero loss, dude took that on, like, two days or something mm-hmm. like that. It was, like, two days, maybe. The Anglicus loss, not the best. But he's got good wins. That rear naked choke win over uh, 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 Jose Augusto, dude. Dude took a beating, just got his face beat in, and then, like, third round, chokes him out. Like, dude's getting wrecked. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, MMA Clips took a dog shot on. Did you get him at plus 425 yeah. or, like, plus 4 something? Because if you did, that you did it right. Like, that's the smart move. Um, like, yeah, Kasanga and I should be the rightful favorite, but not not 425 on Polizzi type of deal. You know what I mean? So, uh, you who do you have in this one? Why? And how do you feel about that line? Do you think it's moved correctly or what? Yeah, man, I got to agree. I'm actually kind of sad that that line is gone. I thought it's going to be it stay by the time we did the show. And, you know, it'd, it'd be crazy because I was, I was going to come on here and be like, dude, what the hell? Like input at minus 500. What are we, what are we doing? Um, no shot. I super disagree with that. But now it's coming down around minus 300. That's a little bit more realistic. Um, dude, plus 400. That's a great bet, dude. Um, yeah, because there's, I mean, are we crazy for thinking if Impa gets taken down, like he gets styled on, like Pelosi is a very good grappler, very competent on the mat, very good passes, very, very fast. And that's not Impa's game, dude. Impa wants to keep this on the feet, keep it at range and, and you know, and try to hurt Alex. But like you were saying about his wins, man, he actually has a win over Jamal Pose, a nice little hill mm-hmm. hook, which, you know, I, I will say like, it's not like a very you know, successful move at a high clip, you know, at this high level of MMA, but that's good, man. That's good. That's good because that dude's huge. Like uh, we saw with Derek Lewis, how sometimes these big fat giant dudes like are hard to submit, and they just have like no limbs. Like how are you gonna snatch something up when you got that heel hook? So um, that's a very good look for Pelosi. But Impa being minus five hundred, definitely gotta disagree with that. Um, this line is probably more a little bit realistic. But even then, I don't blame anyone taking a shot on Pelosi. Um, I'm gonna go with Impa. I think he does eventually catch Alex. But I, I'm kind of surprised at this line, man. That's kind of my take on the fight. Yeah. So, like, Kasanga and I should be the favorite. I understand that. But, like, I don't think he – I don't think he's – I think Belize really has a good shot at beating him because if he gets this down, that's – he has very good control, especially if he's able to take the back. But he has to get it down because his striking is not good. However, he's extremely durable. Belize is extremely durable. If you go yeah. back and rewatch that Yoel Romero fight, Similar to the Augusto fight, dude just takes a beating and it takes forever. Yoel Romero is hitting this dude with like the craziest power shots and can't put him down. Just can't. Like he eventually does. 
But like Polizzi just eats a ton and he just keeps coming. And he hasn't really shown any any uh signs of that durability going away. Like the dude still has that durability. And I mean, he's only got 13 fights in his pro career, so it's not like he's been been around for a long time. I think Polizzi's got a real shot and like I said, Kasangani probably wins more often than not. But for the sake of the pick, I'm going to take Polizzi. And I think he's going to just – I think he's getting it done. I think he's going to get a rear naked choke at some point. Nice, I know dude. that's silly. He, but, I mean, he should be the the bigger guy. Like, I mean, not like necessarily height-wise or anything like that. But, like, Kasangani is realistically a middleweight, right? Uh, yep. Polizzi, could he make middleweight? Sure. But, like, dude's legit. He fills out this 205-pound frame. Like, you know, like, could he make middleweight? I think he – maybe he has in the past. I can't remember. I don't – if he has, it's been a long time. Um, but, yeah, I feel like – yeah, maybe he hasn't. No, I don't think he has. But either way, I feel like Polizzi is going to be the, the thicker boy. I think he's going to be able to get this fight to the mat at some point, and I think he's going to have the ability to get the rear naked choke, and that's what I'm predicting, a late one. Like, I'm talking third round – after Kasong and I hit him with everything in the kitchen sink. Um, and he's just tired of punching him. Both of his hands are broken. And he's like, dude, I can't hit you anymore. Please stop. And he's like, I ain't hear no bell. And like, <laughs> Kasong and I like, I don't want to hurt you anymore. Like, stop this. And police, he's just like, I got you now. And he drags him to the mat and chokes him out. I, don't, I could be just getting crazy. But like, he's done it before. He's done that before to guys that just beat the brakes off him. I thought he was going to do it to Romero. But then I realized, oh, yeah, you're not taking down Yolo Romero. Like, it's just not going to happen. So with no camp, <laughs> yeah, with no camp, but also like even in general, you know, Romero's takedown defense is fantastic. He can stuff yeah. takedowns when he's like 55. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that dude. Yeah, for sure. Like Yoel Romero is, it, it took Yoel Romero 459 of the third round to knock him out. And like, yeah, dude, dude took a beating that whole fight. So I think, I think that's what he's going to do. He's just going to wear out. Kasong and I, because Kasong and I is going to be too tired from using Polizzi as a punching bag. And eventually he's getting taken down and sub. I'm calling it. I think it's going to happen. He's done it before. He can do it again. And that would be great. Um, just, just for the nice. fact that like, he's such a, such a dog. Um, I'm an Alex Polizzi fan. I find myself picking him in most fights. I was really down on him after the Carl Moore loss, but you know, uh, we'll see who we got. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> best root beer to crack open. I'm a, dude. Barks all the way, brother. Barks all the way. That is the best. It's got that bite to it. You know what I mean, dude? You know what? I agree. Up. I agree. I agree. A hundred percent. A and W right sure behind it. Like like a specialty root beer or something. And even then, like Barks still hits. Barks is good. <laughs> I'm about it. Like the only problem with Barks, and I love Barks, is it does have a small amount of caffeine in it. So like you don't want to be drinking that like super late. Or you're gonna be like, man, no, I can't sleep at night. Or maybe that's just me because I'm old now. But uh, <laughs> no, I feel you. But you can't have caffeine at like, like while you're watching the fights. You can't just be like, you know, going yeah. into the main card. You're still slamming barks, like getting that caffeine. Uh, <laughs> if I go to the gym at like anything past like three thirty, and I take pre workout, I can't sleep. Like <laughs> it's crazy. Same, <laughs> dude. I I try not. I make sure that I don't get any caffeine past noon because mm. like that's a problem. That's a problem. Uh, because you know, then I won't <laughs> sleep and I already have, I already don't sleep enough. Like t I gotta be back. Uh, so like right now it's like almost nine 30 local time for me and I gotta be back to the gym tomorrow to open up at 5. AM. So oh, it's like, man. I don't sleep enough as is, it's tough. But, but like, you know, like I can't, if I'm never going to sleep, I'm drinking caffeine late. So that's the only knock on barks. Otherwise barks is, is top tier. Um, like <laughs> MMA clips has a funny comment. <laughs> more, of a, more of a cream soda guy. You know, there ain't nothing wrong with a cream soda. It's I liked it more as a kid, but the root beers where it's at these days, guys. The root beers where it's at. Um, but I don't hate a cream soda. I don't hate a cream soda. There's a couple of them that are good, you know. Um, A and W is an okay root beer, but if you give me a mug root beer, I'm gonna look at you like really mug. It's just foam. That's all it is. It's nothing but foam. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what you know, you know what I'm saying? But but th those are the fights. We've talked about root beer, we talked submission escapes. Um, we talked about it all, right? We even talked a little bit about the UFC early on. We got we talked about some old school UFC, Cody McKenzie, um, classical Andrew being from uh Alaska, now discovered the great Cody McKenzie with his his 10 guillotine finishes, I think it was. Yeah, 10 guillotines in a row, actually. Um, and i somebody's probably put together a compilation of just Cody McGenzie, just boom, 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 uh, just knocking him out. Uh, McPooperton, have I ever had a beer? 
Um, so I actually don't drink. I don't drink alcohol at all. Um, never have. And I don't ever want to. So I will not be partaking in that. That's just a funny bad. name. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people do. And if that's your thing, good for you. That's not my thing. I'll stick yeah. with root beers. Um, prefer- preferably a root beer with, with no sugar. You know, I do run a gym here. I can't get fat. I'll fire myself. So, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I, I haven't drank. So no beer. No. Um, but yeah, like uh, we went through it all today. So Effie, did you have fun breaking down the PFL? Yeah, man, it was it was fun looking into this and just kind of not really knowing who a lot of these guys are and just seeing what the tape says. And yeah, man, it's always a good time talking to you about fights. I really like your channel, man. You're one of the best in, in the space, man. You really care about the fights, man. And I know you're at the end of the day, like a huge, huge fan and, and you know your stuff. So that's what it really comes down to, man. So yeah, dude. So I'm <laughs> big pooper. Tin. Nice, dude. Hell dude, yeah. yeah. Seriously. At least you're functioning, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll have my i'm sipping on some high noon right now there you I'm go watch some hockey but yeah man thanks for having me on really appreciate you guys really appreciate the chat did yeah, you man. have a cousin or something that fought for bellator me yeah something uh, like that? no my so I just, my co-host martin his cousin oh, taylor yeah, co-host cousin. gallardo gallardo mm-hmm. guy Wardo or something like that uh yeah she was one fight away from having to fight kayla harrison for a million dollars she ended up losing to pacheco because obviously like pacheco so savage right. uh yeah, and but she trains out of Extreme Couture, you know, got pretty far in the, in the playoffs. And so every time she would fight, yeah, we would haul around and watch her fight. So we got to uh, shout her out, you know? So. Yeah, t- Taylor. Uh, I'll fuck up the last Gilardo, name. Right? I think is how you say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, oh, man, thanks. Effie oh, does yeah. have socials. Follow them all and subscribe to his YouTube. This dude puts out fantastic content. I think sometimes people don't wait for your intro to be over. <laughs> I think that's the problem. I don't know what your analytics say about that. Because it's a fantastic intro, but it is lengthy. <laughs> um, but like, dude, your content's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, I don't understand dude. it. I, you're what? one of the people I watch every week. In fact, I watched <laughs> your video twice this week and uh, already. I watched it, uh, I think it was last night when it dropped. Um, uh, and then I watched it. It's any action sports cast. Look him up, MMA Clips. You're going to love him. Make him part of your regular rotation. I'm not kidding. He's literally one of my favorites. Uh, but I watched it last night. And then, and I, I think it was last, it might've been this morning. I don't know. My days are running together. And then I watched it again on my way to work <laughs> because I was like kind of tired when I watched it the first time. And I was like, I don't remember what the hell he said. So watch, watch all of Effie's content, all of it. Subscribe. <laughs> I guess you're not even getting paid for ads yet. Get, subscribe to this oh, guy's yeah. channel. Darn it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any action sports cast, man. For a while it was me and a co-host, but it's funny because in the intro I introduced my co-host. I don't even have one anymore. Uh, so it's just that. me, man. Uh, I'm you know I edit, do all this stuff. It it's a fun time. I love talking about fights. I love researching fights. And and yeah, man, I've been doing it for about three years now. And yeah, I'm on Twitter. Hit me up if you like hockey. I'm always talking about hockey on there. He is um, talking about hockey a lot. I almost I almost had to like mute him. Because I'm, I'm surprised Tyler doesn't have me like unfollowed and muted honestly because he I know he doesn't fuck with other sports. But yeah, dude. Yeah, hit me up on Twitter. Any action um link to his channel is in the description of this video cool yeah man so, thanks for having me on though man tyler's a great dude man all your, your supporters on the channel obviously super cool people and yeah man i watched your video a couple times too and thank you and holly home man hey let's do it holly come on holly let's, let's go holly Holm, <laughs> get this one done I, I said it too i was like i want to pick her so bad man like oh man i've been on and on for hours but like <laughs> Dude, she's doing it. And I'll be going on it. Like, uh, I'll be doing it tomorrow on Couch Warriors channel. I'm a part of the panel. You know how we do it, guys. We yeah, do the panel yeah. odd numbers on my channel, even numbers on Couch Warriors channel. And we're losing viewers as we talk here, but that's okay. We're, we're going to run through it right quick. Um, watch the panel tomorrow night. Um, it's a stacked panel. There's like five of us there. I'm on it, of course. Couch Warriors on it. Um, Lou Betch is going to be there. Uncle Wheezy is going to be there. Um, I don't know him yet, but Pepe Silvia or Silva Silvia, yeah, I, think yeah. Silvia. I don't know. I, I, I don't know him yet. I'm going to meet him. I haven't seen his stuff, but it sounds like Smart. he's held in a really, yeah, really high good. regard. Yeah, so he yeah. must be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. But yeah, so all five of us are going to be doing the panel and uh, I, MMA uh, content is weird. Like there's like, there's so many of us out there that have big channels that I've just never even seen. Dude, and, yeah. like, Isn't that crazy? Like, um, there's some dude like Lucas Tracy that I just discovered, like, I don't know, four months ago. And he's a like, huge channel. And, yeah. I, and like, he's terrible. Like, like <laughs> his takes are awful. I don't, I, I actually made it so YouTube doesn't show show his stuff. 
That's so funny. my thing. Like, I'm sure, you know, I'm, I admire the hustle. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm you're doing the thing, right? Like, it's just not content I want to watch. But, like, I'm just discovering some of these guys that I'm like, how on earth have I not seen you in my recommended yet? Dude, so, yeah, no, I feel the same way where I'm like, I feel it happens a lot with that dude, MMA Guru. Like, I've never seen a single thing of his content ever. Like, I've never seen it. But I see like clip like people retweet him or like all the this time. and that. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, or who the f is this guy? Like, he's got a huge channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like more than 100k subs and stuff. Yeah, like bigger a than lot. Cole. Like, yeah, he was on he's the countdown. That was so funny. I've watched some like, of it. Some of it's funny, yeah. but like he's yeah. also an incel. Like I swear. <laughs> so like I can't watch. I can't watch much of it. Um, like, like I mean, I don't know. Like sometimes he says stuff, and you're like, this guy's kind of funny, and like you know right. whatever. But then like, what's he's totally an incel. What's funny is like there's you can totally tell when like people are like they like over amplify things like this fighter is gonna kill this guy and yeah. like this guy is gonna and just for like you know the reaction where I'm like dude like I, 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 I mean, I'm in Vegas like I see these guys like I've seen like a uh, bunch of fighters at the gym like I'm never gonna be like this guy's a bomb like <laughs> this guy has no chance like he's dead like no like and they're always like cool like you'd be surprised I mean you know like you're around the fighters but like they're cool man like they're super nice people Chris Curtis super nice guy like. I yeah, love people talk about him like, oh, what a quitter, what a pussy. Like, oh, no. I'm like, dude, you guys are crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, there's very few fighters that are absolutely like actually not good. Like, I've there's been very few fighters I've ever said anything bad about. Um, I've been on record saying that Chelsea Chandler's only skill is that she's big. I stand by that. Yeah, yeah. Like, her that only skill is that she's big. It's working for her. But like, I'm not trying to be mean. I just don't think she has a ton of skill. But like. Other than her, I like I'm really complimentary of even fighters that I pick against. I try to be, but like, yeah, some guys they just try to like get the clicks and like, yeah. like, they, like uh, I mean, every reaction is just screaming and it's like whatever, dude. Dude, this one real fast, I'll say it. Like, was this Michael Gilmore the worst fighter I've ever seen? Like the worst fighter I've ever seen. Like that dude because I was taping Andre uh, Petrovsky and I was like, oh my god, this guy, uh, this guy is the worst fighter I've ever fucking. <laughs> hey, my boy Jerry. Yeah, that was true. I okay, hate it on. Hate on I know you talking about you, but, Tyler, but but not his skill. I don't hate on yeah. his skill. He, I'll hate on his skill. Like he is awkward. Just like doesn't keep his hands low. Doesn't check leg kicks. Super hittable. Like what, how does he win? Awkward <laughs> but effective. Yeah, yeah. This guy's dead. Yeah, but he's a goofy pretend samurai, which is stupid as heck. I will tell him to his face that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He's not a samurai, and he's talking about how. Okay, we're about to go on a little tangent, guys. You guys are doing this to me. Chat, you're doing this to me. Okay, Yuri Prohashka is not a samurai. First off, he's from what? The Czech Republic? Mm -hmm. Samurais are Japanese, first off. And you don't, you're never going to find one in the Czech Republic. Also, dude's trying to be this like honorable good guy. Dude, the samurai, the samurai were bad guys. They were like, they were like the, the emperor's like oppressive guys that come in and like beat up the farmers that are like, <laughs> not paying their, their extra money that was unjustified taxes or whatever. The samurais were jerks. So, like, dude's like, oh, honorable samurai. And then, also, dude lost. He's lost a fight. If you lose a battle as a samurai, was it Sopoku or whatever, where you stick that damn sword Jibuku, in you? Yeah, you know, yeah. He hasn't cut his innards out. So, he's not a samurai. I will, like, he, but he's very, very good at just, like, knocking guys dead. So, I actually picked him this week, and I hate that I did it, because I do hate picking him. Nice but I think, dude, like, he just knocks guys dead, and I know. And Rakic coming off a massive layoff, he's been hit plenty of times. If he gets hit by Yuri with one of his goofy things, he can knock him dead. I and mean, like, how, how do you feel about this? You're a coach, like when you're so used to fighting fundamentally found like guys like that have you know clean strikes that you are expecting from certain angles, and then you throw in this crazy guy, like that's an advantage for the crazy guy, right? Like for like, the unique angles, like reminds me of back in the day, Tony Ferguson, uh, he was just so awkward and fluid. And his striking, obviously, his speed ended up fading in his career. But, like, I, how would you even game plan for someone like Jerry? Because, like, he's throwing from so crazy of an angle. Like, it's just so weird. So, so yeah. So, that's the thing. Like, it is hard to, to <laughs> game plan for guys like like Yuri. Uh, real quick. I got to address. Okay. No, they shouldn't all be bland. But, like, Pretending to be a samurai is like a goofy child's gimmick. So like, come on, man. Like, it's like, it's like next thing you know, you're gonna get somebody out there like coming out like with their underwear over the top of their shorts, pretending to be a superhero. All okay? right, like, it's come on, it's goofy. Um, like I understand, you know, whatever. So but, <laughs> but how would I? How would I game plan? Like, so you have to basically take away his ability to do that. So you have two options: you either stay all the way out or all the way in. 
uh, Teixeira had the great had a great game plan, and it the only thing that failed him was his age, basically, and like he just he just collapsed at the end because Teixeira damn near beat him. We're using that game plan of just pressure him, stay up in his face, don't give this guy an inch of space. And um, and then and then use the grappling as often as you can. That's the game plan that Teixeira used, and it worked fantastic. Outside of Teixeira, I mean, obviously uh, uh, Pereira was able just to knock him out. Like you can knock people out; that's a thing. But I think like if that fight goes on, that's a dangerous fight for Pereira. So I wouldn't have used that. Like I'm not as good a fighter as Pereira, so like my advice is, you know, obviously not that good for him. Um, <laughs> but like if that fight goes on, that's a lot more dangerous for Pereira than it was for Teixeira. If Teixeira was didn't just like he wasn't so old, right? He was like 43 or something like that. So like he just 43, it caught up to him. But uh, but no, like the game plan is you can either stay all the way out and avoid it, or you have to be all the way in to uh to just like just just not give him the space to do his goofy stuff. But even that can fail because he can hit you with that weird spin and elbow. Um yeah, you have to you have to kind of just mug him, you know, you have to just completely mug him. Like that's what you gotta do. Uh, it's, it's tough. Those unorthodox weird style guys. So like, I have a weird style when I fight, I, I don't punch very often. Like my coach used to yell at me for this all the time. He's like punch. Like I, I throw a lot of kicks at range. And then as yeah. I crash in, it's knees and elbows the whole time. I don't, I don't throw hardly huh. any punches. Like, like I'll go from like throwing a front kick at range to like stepping in with like an elbow, like coming forward like that <laughs> instead of a jab, because like, I mean, I don't know. Your jab has a glove on it. I want to hit you with my pointy elbow. You know what I mean? So <laughs> But so like my style is kind of unorthodox too. And like guys that had success on that for against me were either guys that were all the way out or I mean, all the way in didn't do well. Cause I wanted to get in the clinch anyway, but like, but like boxing range was a range that I sucked at. Cause I couldn't hit you with my elbows. Um, and my kicks weren't as good and I couldn't quite clinch you, but you were just like just boxing range. I hated that. So, so anybody ever fights me now, if anybody decides to run up on me in the street, you know, if you keep me a boxing range, probably can, Dude, probably can not box me. I can't let's box. Get, let's get you on rough and rowdy. Uh, I, you you can coach me. Like, I'll be on rough and rowdy. Isn't that like boxing though? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I'm a bad boxer, but I could, I could probably I could probably coach you to a win with uh, with some help from my buddy Brandon Meyer. Shout out to him over there doing the darn thing for BKFC, cashing as a plus five hundred underdog. Oh. He just last one for us. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, like yeah, like awkward styles work sometimes. And I was actually telling. So there's this heavyweight he's uh, that I'm working with right now. He's amateur. He hasn't even had his debut yet. Nothing like that. And like his grappling is like, it's not there yet. He's very new to grappling, but he can strike pretty well. And I was telling him, dude, sometimes to, to beat a better grappler, especially at the lower levels, especially at lower levels at heavyweight, like the guys you're fighting in the amateur scene in like heavyweight local fights are terrible. They're just like, there's fat guys that played a lot of UFC video games and think they can do it. <laughs> so I were D1 like, football players. <laughs> yeah. Or like, or yeah, like they, maybe they wrestled like their, their high school years. And now they're like four years out of high school and they're like, I should go fight. And like, yeah, there's fat now. Um, <laughs> so I told him like to beat these grapplers that may be better than you, you used to be nastier than them. Do stuff. That's like going to make them say, Oh, this is more uncomfortable than I thought it was going to be because they're still amateurs and they aren't ready for that. Um, and that's, you can kind of get away with that as you level up by making people uncomfortable in different ways. Like in the grappling, like at, at the UFC level, you're not going to, you know, beat a guy by like, if he's, you know, if he's grappling with you and you just grab like on the side of his nose and just, just break his nose. Like, you're not going to beat him by that. He's going to be pissed off about it, but like, and it's going to be harder for him to breathe, but like you can get away with that in the amateur level and that'll make him quit. But like, you know, it's a thing. So, um, let's see. We, we got to respond to these guys. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally like pacifist. Won't ever hit anybody. He tries to win his fights by just like not hitting him. Dude, yeah. wasn't there a PFL fight where there's like two friends that fought and yes, then like, and they, they didn't him. fight each other? Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> that was hilarious. They actually cut them. Um, yeah, I mean, Yuri is actually insane. I do agree with that. Colby's is a gimmick, and Colby, like, sometimes he says funny stuff, but like, it's not that's like. True. But like it's not like it's he's not it's going downhill. Dude, it's going when, downhill bad. when he made fun of Poirier and he does the sad voice, he goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. Fifteen minutes to make life fair." That's hilarious, dude. Like that's I like I don't care. Also, like that's so funny. Him with Ian Gary is hilarious. So like, funny. But I was there in the crowd when he did that with Leon's dad when he said that about Leon. I was there, dude. 
everybody was on Leon's side. Like, yeah. That's so weird. Even his own like fans were like, oh, geez, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, so, okay, like, I don't know. Maybe, like, he has a ton maybe of fans I'm just not very, like, um, sensitive because, like, I don't know. It's like, okay, so I've gone on a soapbox. I'm going to try the last soapbox, I promise. <laughs> Before, like, fighters are kind of sensitive sometimes. Yeah. Like, either something's true or it isn't. Right. And if it's true, then yeah, it's true. So like, okay, you know, sticks and stones, man. But if it isn't true, well then that's not true. So like, whatever, man, just like, right. Is Leon's dad dead? Yes, he is. <laughs> so like, he, if he's like, yeah, your dad's dead or whatever. It's like, yeah, man. Like, I know, like I, I probably was at the funeral where like, yeah, he's dead. Like my dad's dead. I understand that. If somebody was like, yeah, your dad's dead. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he is yeah, yeah. died four years ago or so. Not quite four years. This is a little under four years. So it's like, yeah, man, I know that. Like, it's it's just the truth. You, you would expect him not to like leap out, like, <laughs> like yeah, you know. yeah. Like it, it shouldn't it shouldn't like offend you that bad. I don't know. You're a fighter. You're gonna go in there and fight this guy. Like, well, don't get upset about that's, it. Like, that's why Habib was so like different. He was like a, a a robot up there when him and Connor faced off. Like he could have just stood there forever. Like he didn't care what Connor was saying and doing nothing. What if he talks about? Like, his, I mean. I mean, Do you like, remember when Ian Gary was like, "So and so beats their kids." <laughs> that was that was messed up because I actually got him in legal trouble. <laughs> really? Oh my god, that's like, hilarious. It just made it harder for him because he was going through a divorce with like, um, he was battling <laughs> oh for custody god. and it like messed up his like, it like drug out his custody battle. So that one was kind of a, like that one I could see being mad about because you're like, dude, like this is like, now you have like put me in like a situation where I have to like pay a lawyer longer to like deal with this. So that's annoying. Like, but like. If they say something about your kid, like it depends on what they say about your kid. Like you can't spell. If they say anything He's bad ugly. enough, they'll probably go to like go to jail or something. You know what I mean? Like, it, like I don't know. It's like one of those things where it's like, yeah, they're probably a jerk for saying mean stuff about your kids, but like, either it's it's the same thing. Either it's true or false, and like you getting upset about it isn't going to change whether it's true or false. Just like, yeah, it is what it is. You know, like it's true mm -hmm. or false. If it's false, yeah, that's false. Everybody's going to find out that's false really fast. We live in the age of the internet. You're going to find out real fast. If it's true, yeah, maybe it's true. And, uh, you know, deal with it. Like, I get all the time. People in my comments when I when I, when when they get mad at me tell me how ugly I am. I'm like, guys, this isn't news. <laughs> like, look at, look at those ugly yeah. teeth, man. They're crooked yeah, as hell, man. I ain't getting by my looks. Like, it's Damn, okay. I just say I'm on the same boat, dude. <laughs> that's why you wear the glasses, right? No, I'm, just yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> dude, people think I, I was going to, you know, do an episode, no glasses at 500. And then when it's time to take them off, I would take them off and have more glasses under. <laughs> dude, that'd be sick. Like, I still tell people that you have, like, like the the Scott whatever uh, whatever the Cyclops from X Men Scott <laughs> Summers Scott Summers eyes where if you take your glasses off you just like shoot beams out dude like I was I'm surprised that we went the whole out. stream no one mentioned them uh, usually when I do someone stream at least someone will be like hey what the what's up with the glasses bro what's up with the glasses man uh we'll see what's up yeah dude like no kidding right like like doing? I'm hitting way out of my league like my girl's a babe and like. I didn't get her based on my looks. Let's be honest. Cause like she could do way better there, but yeah, dude, that's right. They saw, they saw her come on stream and they're like, Oh yeah. Cause I, I did, we did a video where it was like the casual and the, and the expert and she's the casual or whatever. Um, that was like, you know, she's a hottie. So it's cool. You know? Um, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. They're probably jealous. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. That's funny. But all right, let's get out of here. I got to be at work at five in the morning. It's yeah, almost 10 o'clock. So, uh, Effie, shout out your stuff again real quick for everybody that's still here or just showed up. Give, give us the rundown and we'll go from there. Yeah, man. Hit me up on YouTube. Let's get up there. Um, getting close to 300 subscribers, man. Uh, any action sportscast. We do videos every single week. And yeah, man, just up there breaking down fights just like everyone else, man. Uh, love fights. Love the UFC. Watch every single week, every single fight. And yeah, man, I, I just am a huge MMA fan. And follow me on Twitter if you like hockey. I talked about hockey a lot on Twitter as well. Yeah, and on Instagram, I post my bets and all my pics and stuff like that. But yeah, man, hit me up on uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Any Do it, guys. Podcast. Get him over 300 subs tonight. Get him on there. 300 subs. JD, JD. thought we were just starting. Sorry, JD. We were just on a soapbox. You have Sullivan run for a lot. Five units. No, I was joking. <laughs> here's, the, here's the pro tip, JD. Uh, after I'm done, we're done with the stream, I'll monetize it. So you'll have to watch ads. So don't even exit the stream. Just click the, like, the beginning and start from there. So you don't have to watch ads. You get it for free. There you go. Look at that. MMA go. Clips is subbing. Everybody have a good night. That's right. Everybody go check out Effie. If you haven't got him over 300 subs by the end of tonight, I'm going to be really disappointed in you guys. Please do that. 
Um, but with that, we are out. See you later. Later.